Hello there friends and welcome! This is a guide on how to easily defeat Melania, one of the most infamous bosses in Elden Ring, probably considered to be the toughest of them all. And we are doing it with a shield and poke turtle build of course. For us, just to show you that shield builds are still very much viable, even after the barricade shield nerf. And second, because I've heard plenty of people saying that it's impossible to defeat Melania with a shield as she will heal whenever she attacks you even when you block her attacks, this isn't really true at all as you can see, because we can easily out-damage her heals. And the key to that is bleed damage, of course. And the best part is how simple it is to do it with this build. You don't have to master the boss's attack patterns, you are allowed to make plenty of mistakes and still survive just fine. To ensure your victory, so here's how it goes. I'll go step by step with the gear, buffs and also how to handle her most unique attacks. Alright, so even before battle begins, you already want some preparations. First, cast Golden Vow to increase damage and damage negation, Blessing's Boom for a decent regeneration effect, use your uplifting aromatic, quaff a NFP flask, go for a seppuku, and lastly eat an exalted flesh, just for a small increase in physical damage. Of course, also drink your wondrous flask. Right, so first you have to close the distance between you and Melania. Just put your shield up and start poking her. With just two hits, that's enough to bleed her heavily. Four hits and she's already lost 6700 HP. Now she's going for her special flurry attack, the waterfall dance. It's easy to catch because she always go up and then do this little pose. Now the best way to avoid it as a shield character is to back away for a bit, you don't have to put your shield right away. You might as well try to restore your stamina until she flies at you. So back away a bit and start poking her. You can actually block the attacks and if you get lead going, she will stagger and that will break her special attack. That's how powerful poking can be. You can actually interrupt her waterfall dance. It's really just a matter of pressing R1 and keep poking at her. Just be careful not to let your stamina fall down to zero. Always wait for it to recover before you start poking again. Now, you might notice that sometimes Melania will move around your character to try to hit your flank, so she'll attack you from the side. The easiest way to block this is to pay attention to when she's moving, have her locked on so your character will automatically switch to where she is, no matter where she moves. So notice that sometimes Melania will move away from your character, and this makes for a perfect opportunity to heal with your flask if you need it. You can even use some consumables too, like uplifting aromatic. Right, so now we are going for her second phase. As soon as her second phase begins, Melania will be on top of you, and she'll move for a flying attack right at your character. You can actually block this initial hit, just like this. Also, notice because there is somewhat of a long time from the start of her second phase until she actually comes flying at you. You can use this time to heal up with your flask, just in case you didn't start with high health. This way you get your entire health back for her second phase, which will come in handy just now. But anyways, just block her first lunge attack. After that, you'll want to dodge. Unfortunately, this is the only part in the battle that you have to dodge outside of grab attacks. But because we have our equip load flask, we can roll just fine, even at high equipment load. As soon as Melania comes crashing down at you, she'll turn into a flower that will soon release a big burst of energy. The reason I tell you to go with full health for this phase is that sometimes it can be a bit tricky to dodge. Even if you miss the burst, however, because we have full health, you will not be killed. So you have to time the dodge right before the flower bursts and then just roll a bit until you are away from the flower so you don't take the heavy damage ticks and the scarlet rot effect too. The good thing is, as you are about to see, this attack has a massive recovery time for Melania, so you can easily heal back to full health after this and it is also a perfect time to go for seppuku again and then another buff of your choice or your aromatic. After that you can just resume the shield and poke. And as usual, remember to never let your stamina fall down to zero. So long as it is one, we can fully block all of her attacks besides grabs. Now, this is important, so here Melania is going for her grab attack. It is by far her most dangerous attack of them all for a shield character. Not the waterfall, because we can just block that, but rather the grab, it is unblockable. Unfortunately, this is also the second part where you have to dodge. The good thing is... It's a pretty telegraphed attack. Also, because of how easy it is to stagger Melania, most of the time she will not be able to get her grab attack off 
so long as you keep poking her, because as soon as she goes for the grab, you'll poke her, and that will stagger her, interrupting the grab. After we dodge the grab, as usual, just keep poking at her behind your shield. Your bleed damage will easily outpace her healing effects, just to show you that shields are very much viable against Melania, so just keep at it. One of her attacks during her second phase, she will fly above your character. You don't want to keep poking, what you want to do is lock the camera on her, then back away a bit while holding your shield. The reason is, if you just keep spamming poke while she's doing this attack, she'll attack right on top of you, and well, we don't have a shield on our head, do we? So you'll take damage. Meanwhile, if you move just a little bit while holding your shield, you'll get to block the attack. Right after this, she'll go for a burst of energy that deals pretty low damage when you're blocking, and inflicts just a little bit of Scarlet Rot. This doesn't really matter, and we are never in any danger because of this, as our damage output with Bleed is simply too high. Now, sometimes Melian will go for her Flower Blossom attack again. It's very easy to know because she'll start glowing. After that, once again, Seppuku and then heal or use a buff like her uplifting aromatic. You'll have plenty of time because of the recovery. Now, for Melania's clone attack, <laughs> it's actually super easy to avoid. You just have to block with your shield, that's all, just keep blocking, and you'll easily avoid her clones. The best part is she only heals for her last clone attack, when she actually comes at you. And then just resume the shield and poke. So just the usual block and R1 spam. We foiled her grab attempt. And that was it, Melania has been failed. Pretty easy and simple and certainly makes for a very comfortable and easy playstyle, no matter your skills in the game. Now just as a note, if she does her special waterfall attack for the flurry during the second phase, it's the same as the first, you just back away with your shield a bit, then start poking at her, you'll block all of the attacks and most likely inflict bleed, which will stagger her and break her combo. Now just for a quick section on the gear that we used. So first, an Occult Cross Naginata at maximum power, with the Seppuku Ash of War skill to increase the effectiveness of our bleed. That's how we bleed her so fast during her first phase. We go with Occult to increase the damage even further by adding Arcane Scaling, which coincidentally also increases the blood loss buildup. As for shields, the Fingerprint Stone shield is a must. When you upgrade it to the max at plus 25, it will have 90 guard boost. Combine that with the Great Shield Talisman, and your block attempts will not cost any stamina, no matter if the enemy is big or a boss or has heavy attacks, even without barricade shield. We also have a finger seal here, just to cast some of the good low faith incantations. Now as far as armor, the bull gold set is the best for tankiness, I already have a guide linked to the site here on how to get it, but as far as the helmet, you should really consider using the white mask, because it will increase the power of your attacks when you inflict the enemy with bleed or cast seppuku on yourself, the problem is, the white mask is missable, and I didn't get it in this playthrough. So for talismans, Great Shield of course, Lord of Blood's Exaltation for higher attack power through bleed, Rotten Winged Sword Insignia for higher power during successive attacks, which are very easy to do when you're poking from behind the shield, and lastly the Spear Talisman to increase the power of our attacks when we counterattack, that is, when we attack the enemy while they're also attacking, also very easy to do when hiding behind a shield. As for consumables, mostly the uplifting aromatic and also the boiled crab. Please remember that I also have a guide link to the site here on how to easily maximize your damage and also your tankiness through some of these consumables. As far as spells, we have Golden Vow and also Blessing Spoon. You can also go with Flame Grant Me Strength for a little bit more attack power in the first phase, but casting it during the second phase is somewhat annoying because this has very low duration, at 30 seconds by default. Now your wondrous physics effects are very important. First, the winged crystal tier, to reduce your equipment load so you can fast or medium roll even with high load. And lastly, the green burst crystal tier, to increase your stamina regeneration which has amazing synergy with a shield build, so we can poke even more. Lastly, as far as stats, I am at level 145 at the moment. This isn't really needed, you can certainly do it around level 120. Vigor, of course, to increase your hit points. We need 48 strength. I have 43 here because I use the Godric's Great Rune for a plus 5 to all of my stats. But this is needed for the fingerprint shoot. 
20 faith, so we can get 25 to cast our incantation buffs. And lastly, quite a lot of arcane. Arcane is simply way too good post patch 1.03. It will increase your damage with the occult upgrade and also the effectiveness of your bleed by making it a lot easier to proc bleed. 15 dexterity, which becomes 20 with Goldrick's Great Rune, is just to properly equip the Cross Naginata. I also have just a little bit of endurance, but with the Winged Crystal Tear, this isn't really needed. Alright everyone, so this was it for pretty much the easiest way, at least in my opinion, of defeating Melania, with little effort involved. If you found this guide useful, then please remember to like, subscribe, and even consider becoming a channel member. Thank you for watching, and see you next time, friends!